Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're talking muddy water bass fishing. How do you go out when the water has changed color and turned muddy and actually catch those fish? There are some very specific lure designs, very specific colors that make all the difference. Now, when we're talking muddy water, it's really important to differentiate between the different kinds of muddy water. If you're in a lake that has murky water, it's just always got a stain to it. That is completely different than a fishery that turns muddy overnight. So you've got murky fisheries and you've got muddy water, muddy rising water and muddy stable water. All three fish very differently. Let's talk murky first, then we'll switch to the others. Murky water, if it's stable, say your lake always has a foot or two of visibility, it's a complete different animal. That same visibility in a highland reservoir that's normally clear and suddenly it turns that water color, you need the brightest chartreuses, the brightest oranges, but you get on a murky water fishery, they don't care at all. You get 18 inches of viz, you get two feet of viz, those fish will eat ghost colors. So keep in mind, if you're on a fishery that always has stained water, if it's a little clearer than normal, treat it like truly clear water. Only treat it like muddy water if it's more stained than normal. Now for the rest of us, guys that live on fisheries that are anywhere between two and a half feet of viz and 40 feet of viz, and then all of a sudden storms start happening in the springtime and that water starts rising, it starts getting just chocolate milk filthy. You're the guys that, that really can struggle with it because it's such a change. So where do the fish go? What are they doing and how do you catch them? This time of year, if that water starts to rise, if it's still, you know, 20 degrees outside, those fish may hold back a little, but generally speaking, when that muddy water starts flowing, those fish are going dirt shallow. They're going to the bank, they're going to the back of pockets, they will skip right over the stuff in between and shoot all the way to the back of an arm where that water is flowing in. So it can really progress the pre-spawn almost instantly. Something that would take weeks for the fish to travel from outside structures to backs of pockets can happen in a day or two. So when it gets really muddy like that, scrap everything that you were doing and go shallow. And how shallow? We're talking dirt, dirt shallow, inches of water. Now, how do you fish for fish up there? Probably the biggest thing to understand is that when the fish get way shallow like that, they're spooky because they're not used to being up there. Again, a murky water fishery where fish are living shallow, that's a completely different animal than when fish suddenly go shallow. When they suddenly move up, they're a little uncomfortable up there. So if you get up there with your trolling motor, if you're banging around on the boat, those fish will back off, they'll vacate. So you want to throw baits that you can reach up in those shallows, you can fish it effectively, but you won't get snagged. Because if you have to take the boat up there, you can ruin a really good spot. So as far as baits, let's start with the jig. Because on the days where that water's turned muddy and then it goes back to normal weather, maybe it gets cold, those fish will stay up in that mud because on the sunny days, it warms up really quickly. Water that has sediment in it absorbs light really well and it warms up quickly. So the fish will stay there, but when they just don't wanna feed, a jig can be deadly. I'll throw a big profile jig, like a full size flipping jig. Most of the year, I want a jig with a trailer that doesn't move a whole lot. Right now is the opposite. I want bold, I want blacks, blues, purples. I want solid colors that will stand out in that mud. And I want a trailer that will kick. A pack a chunk, a kinky beaver, any of those trailers, a rage craw, anything that will get a lot of movement that will tell those fish in that muddy water that that bait is there. That full profile, big heavy jig. And you want to flip right in 
the cover. And I'll link you the exact baits down in the video description, my exact favorite colors, because even though I throw black blue, this is called hematoma. It's black blue, but it's not this super bold blue. I can add a bright blue trailer and turn it into a bold jig, or I can go down to a black blue like this and turn it into a really muted profile really easily. So the style you're throwing matters. Now, when those fish are aggressive, it's a whole nother ball game. Essentially, I'll throw spinner baits, swim jigs, and then crank baits. And we've got some wind coming. Hopefully this doesn't mess it up for you guys. I could see a wall of wind coming this way. We'll see. But if I'm covering water, a lipless is an awesome way to go. And I, I grabbed three boxes here. Essentially, these are boxes I have set up for the springtime. So a lot of reds, a lot of chartreuses, those bold, bright colors are what we're talking about right now. Those really bright colors. Red and orange, chartreuse, white, that really bold stuff that will stand out in that water and will get those fish's attention. Now that lipless, I'm fan casting, I'm covering water out in like the three to five foot. So as that water stabilizes, as it quits rising, the fish will just be up there on those flats. They'll be up there in the shallow. That lipless is a great way to reach them. But when it's actively rising, you want to be even shallower, okay? So there I'm talking square bells, spinner baits, swim jigs. I mean, look at these, look at these two boxes of square bells. These are the baits that I'm firing. Now I have two boxes here because this box is for dirt, dirt shallow. I'm talking a foot or two of water maximum where I wanna reach a bait so far back up there where I can't even get the boat. I turn to these little guys. See if I could pull a couple good colors out here for you. That Spro right there, just bright, bold, flashy. I'm gonna make a mess of this box, so we'll just pile them up. I'll deal with it in a middle, in a minute. Speed traps. Again, those bright, bold colors. Baits that'll go extra shallow and reach those fish that are just pushing the bank. And then I also have those bigger profiles. And in that muddy water, color and sound. You know we throw that biggie a lot. The two colors that I have in there for this time of year are both those bright, bold colors. Look at this one. I added this guy. Now this one doesn't have a lot of sound, right? It's a silent bait, but that brat, look how bright it is. I had to have it in there. And that one's such a wide kicking bait, just moves a ton of water. How about this one? This is a, this is a 13 bait, it's called a scamp. There's two sizes. This is the big one, there's a smaller one, but listen to this. I literally just pick up baits and shake them and pick the loudest baits in the brightest colors for this time of year. Now, again, if that water stabilizes, if it starts to clear, I immediately go to those more natural tones. So I have those mixed in the box but I'm ready for that muddy water. The benefit of that square bill is you can put it up in that stuff, you can bang it through, and if it starts to hang up, you can pause, and it will back up. These baits are really high floating baits, meaning every one of the baits that I've picked up, well, with the exception of the Brat, all of these baits are plastic baits. They've got a lot of air in them. They're super high float. And the Brat, because of the style of bait it is, the balsa bait, it's super high float too. So you burn them down into that stuff and as soon as you stop, they're backing out. So you don't have to be afraid of throwing it up around wood, up around rocks, because these fish love that stuff this time of year. If you wanna know the exact spot on the spot, hopefully you can hear me as this boat runs by. If you're going down a bank and there's wood in the water and you can see that it's in there, 
the pieces that are sticking straight up out of the water, where there's actual sunlight beating on the wood, if you've got one piling, let's say, and one ends just below the surface, and the other one extends out above, they'll be on that one that extends above. There is just the smallest fraction of heat transfer, but the fish can tell the difference. They'll be on that one. Rocks, if there's rocks sticking up above the surface, they'll get right up against that stuff. So a square bill is a bait that can get up there, can bang through that stuff, can draw a reaction bite, and you can do it without snagging. Now the other two, spinner bait and a swim jig. These two baits are almost universal to me, and we'll wrap it up here. And I'm covering a ton of baits, I know that. So in the video description, I'll give you my very favorite square bills for a couple of different depths, like super loud, a little bit quieter, favorite colors. I'll also give you a favorite swim jig, the trailer, spinner baits, all that stuff will be broken out. So it's really easy for you. If you wanna get a couple of items so you're prepared for muddy water, you can do that without being totally confused. I know when I'm holding up boxes of square bills, I mean, it'll spin you out, but I can look in that box and pick out one or two that are the for sure first ones that I would carry with me. So swim jig and spinnerbait. The spinnerbait will move a ton of water because of the blades. Those blades are spinning, they're churning. If I'm throwing a spinnerbait, I'm typically throwing painted blades if it's true chocolate milk, those bright, bold blades. If it starts to clear, I go to a gold blade, okay? Now, even though it's muddy, I stick with willows. I just love the way that willows sound underwater. They have a unique sound profile. Every style of blade sounds completely different underwater. And there's something about the way that fish that are feeding around shad respond to a willow. It must sound similar to the shad, I don't know, but they respond differently. So even in muddy water, I'll stick with willow blades, but I want them to be painted. Now, I also throw the swim jig a ton. I throw it more than the spinnerbait. The swim jig, it's a little finessier. It doesn't have as much vibration. On paper, the spinnerbait is a better choice. More vibration, more movement, more going on. But the swim jig, I can put it into the thickest cover. I can put it right on the bank. I can stick it in the mud and then wind it out of there. I can throw it inside of a bush that's flooded, over the top of a tree that's flooded, and run it right on out of there. They just do not snag up. This is a California swim jig, three quarter ounce. Now, the, the shallower I get, I'll go a little bit lighter, go to a half ounce, but I'm putting a big trailer on it. This is the full size D walker. I mean, it's a big profile. So even though there's no blades, this thing is moving a ton. That skirt's pulsing, that tail has got that bait rocking. I specifically throw this one because it's such a rigid plastic that it actually rocks the bait. It's not just back there kicking behind the swim jig, it's creating motion and a lot of it. So it almost acts like a blade on its own. But again, with that big weed guard, I can put it in the thickest stuff. When that muddy water is rising, when you've got a storm coming and all of a sudden it's coming up, go fishing. Don't wait for it to end. Go right out there in the thick of that storm and get dirt shallow, inches of water. And as it's rising, go up with it. Just work your way back on those flats. You'll be amazed that those fish are staying in front of you. They're literally picking the shore. As new shoreline goes underwater, they're right there following it and eating everything coming out of that mud. It's incredible. So that guy right there, you can throw it into the thickest cover and wind it out of there with no fear of getting that thing stuck. And then when they eat it and you smash them, you've got them hooked on a gaff of a hook. If you don't have that much cover, if it's not a, an issue of snagging, then that spinner bait with that extra vibration, I'll put a trailer on here too. I like that trailer. You get that full profile, then they tend to eat the body better instead of eating the blades. So put a Kitek or a D Walker on the back of this guy 
and use those bright, bold colors and they'll aim right for the bait. But that spinner bait does a phenomenal job of calling them in. And then again, a square bill, it's amazing in that shallow water. I mean, I, I've got, I've got a couple rods tied up for today sitting here. Now I've got a bright, bold, I believe that's crystal craw speed trap because a speed trap, again, it's a loud bait. A speed trap is a bait that I threw a lot as a kid and I have recently reconnected with it. I've gotten away from it for a long time. And then the other one I had tied on is a lipless, but again, bright, bold, red, day glow, orange, and you're trying to stand out in that water. And there's a special place for red in the spring. I'm sure we'll talk more about that in the coming weeks, but those red baits can just get destroyed. So will the chartreuses, so will those bold whites. All three of those do amazing in that murky water. And then if that water stabilizes, remember, as soon as it stabilizes and it starts to clear, immediately go back towards some of those more natural colors. Maybe not to a true ghost minnow type color. Don't go all the way back, but get back to those natural tones and you'll see that those fish will continue to eat them. And then again, back to the murky water guy. Murky water is not muddy water. If those fish are used to living in that water color, that's their normal. If it gets any clearer, even if that only means that now it's a foot and a half or two feet of viz, to a fish that's used to one inch of viz, that's crystal clear. So on one fishery, you might need a white or a chartreuse bait to fish two feet of viz, and on the next fishery, you might need ghost minnow to actively target those fish. So pay attention to what your lake's normal is and adapt from there. Again, I know I flew through this. Uh, that was a lot of baits in a short amount of time. So I'll break it down really structured in the video description for you with some favorite baits and some favorite colors to make it really easy. And I'll link uh, my favorite rod for throwing. I throw the swim jig and the flipping jig. You can throw them on the same rod. And one of my favorite square bell rods as well, maybe a budget option. Because when you stick those fish, like a big, big fish on a square bill in shallow water, those fish have nowhere to go but up. The shallower you hook them, the more likely that they're gonna start jumping. So that dirt shallow fishing is one of those places where you wanna hook them on the right rod. And if you're hooking them on a treble hook, the right rod is even more critical to keep those fish pinned. Keep that in mind. If you hook a deep water bass, maybe it comes up and jumps, maybe it doesn't. But if you hook them in this much water, They've got nowhere to go but up, and they will just explode out of the water thrashing. So anyway, I'll get all that set up for you in the description. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something from it. You can apply it to your fishing and catch some bigger bass as we head through the pre-spawn. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.